In the previous video, we saw how to authenticate users with Spring Security and JWT authentication mechanism. In this video, we will see how to validate the JSON Web Tokens and develop an API to create and read subreddits. Before starting the video, make sure to check out the first link in the description of this video where you can go through the text version of this tutorial at your own pace along with the complete source code. In the last video, we saw a sequence diagram which provides a high-level overview of the authentication mechanism. In this video, we are going to dive deep onto the fifth point uh, where we validate the JSON Web Token on the server. So this is how the actual process looks like. The client makes a request to the server. The request is intercepted by a custom filter called as JWT authentication filter. This filter will retrieve the access token and validates it. If the validation is successful, the request will be forwarded to the corresponding controller. Now let's go ahead and implement this functionality. So first of all, we are going to create a class called as JWT authentication filter inside the security package. And this class extends the once per request filter class. And uh, we are going to overwrite some methods and inside the do filter internal method, we will intercept the request and fetch the token from the request headers because the client sends the token to the server as part of the request headers by following the bearer scheme. So inside the toFilter internal method, I will call a method called as get JWT from request. And this method takes in the HTTP servlet request as input. So to get the token from this request object, we have to get the authorization header from the request. We can do that by typing request.get header of authorization. Let's store this value inside a string called as bearer token. And this token is now sent in the structure you see on the screen. So it starts with the term bearer followed by a space and followed by the JSON web token. To get the token, we have to exclude the term bearer and just retrieve the term and just retrieve the token. We can do that by using substring method of string class. So here I'm going to type bearer token dot substring of seven. So let us store the token inside a variable called as JWT. And now let's go to the JWT provider class and create a method called as validate token. This method takes in the JWT and as the name suggests, it is responsible to validate the JSON web token. If you remember in the last video, we used asymmetric encryption to create our tokens by signing them with the private key from our key store. And now we will validate the token by using the public key. We can do that by typing jwts.parser.set signing key and here we are going to pass in the public key. For that let's create a method called as get public key and here I will quickly copy paste the implementation which is very similar to the get private key method implementation. But here we are going to call the get certificate method of the key store. So we will get the certificate which goes by the alias name of the key store. And then we call the method get public key, which returns the actual public key from the key store. And of course, as this piece of code throws some checked exceptions, we're going to catch them and rethrow them as a runtime exception. And now back inside the validate token method, I will call the parse claims JWS method and pass in the JSON web token, which we are receiving as input. And if this particular piece of code is executed without any errors, we can be sure that the JSON web token is validated. So in the next step, we are just going to return the Boolean value true. So now let's inject the JWT provider class inside the JWT authentication filter class and call the validate token method. So now if we have a valid token, we have to load the user from the database and set the user details in the Spring Securities security context. To do that, first we have to get the username from the token. We can easily retrieve the username from the token because we are using it as a subject when creating the token. I will go back to the JWT provider class and create a method called as get username from JWT, which takes the token as input. Inside the method, I'm going to get the body of the token, which is nothing but the claims. And from the claims object, I can retrieve the subject by typing claims.getSubject. So this is going to be a string. 
Let's return this value from the method and also let's change the written type of this method to string. Back inside the JWT authentication filter class, let's call the get username from JWT method. And now we have the username. Again, I'm going to copy the code which retrieves the user from the database and sets the user details into the security context. First, we are constructing here. So here first, we are constructing an instance of type username password authentication token and then storing this inside the Spring security context. So now the last part is to call the filter chain. If our token is valid, Spring is going to find the user details inside the security context and it will fulfill our request. If not, it will throw an exception, which we will see at the end of the video. Okay, so we implemented the validation part. Now to test this, we don't have any secured APIs. So let's go ahead and create one API to create and read subreddits. Let's create a class called as subreddit controller. And the first thing we have to do when we create a controller is to annotate the class as rest controller. And for this API, we're going to provide the request mapping as slash API slash subreddit. Let's also add the usual Lombok annotations we are going to need. And the first method we are going to implement is the create subreddit method. This method will follow a post mapping. And as the request body, we will send the information in the form of a DTO. Let's call this DTO as a subreddit DTO. And let's also create this class. So basically to create a subreddit, the information we are going to need is just a subreddit name and description but we are also going to read the subreddit information. For that, we need the ID of the subreddit and lastly, the number of posts which are inside the subreddit. Let's create all these fields inside the DTO and provide all the required Lombok annotations. Okay, so we should always try to avoid to write business logic in our controllers. The responsibility is to receive requests from the client and delegate them to the service layer. So to implement the functionality, we are going to need a service class. Let's create this class inside the service package with the name as subreddit service. And inside this class, let's create a method called as save, which is responsible to create and save the subreddit information. To create the subreddit, First, we have to map the information we need from DTO to subreddit entity. Let's create a method to do these mappings, which is called as map subreddit to DTO. Inside this method, we're going to use the builder pattern to construct our subreddit entity, and we'll just return it back to our method. We can also use some mapping libraries like mapstruct to make our life easier. I will introduce that library in the upcoming videos, but for now, let's concentrate on creating the API and test the token validation logic. So we have our subreddit entity. Let's save this inside the repository. For that, we need to first inject the subreddit repository into our class and later just save the entity by typing subreddit repository.save. After saving the entity, we can set the ID field inside our DTO and return it back to the controller. Back inside the controller, let's inject the subreddit service and call the save method. Let's store the written type and return it back to the client, but we just won't return the subreddit DTO. We will wrap the DTO using Spring's response entity class. In this way, Spring provides us some sensible default information as response to the client. We will type response entity dot status as it is a post call and as we are creating a subreddit, the appropriate written type for this kind of rest call is value 201. In Spring, this value is represented by the enum created. And lastly, let's include the subreddit DTO as the body of the response entity and return it back to the client. Now let's also quickly create an API to read the subreddits. For that, I will create a get all subreddit method, which supports get mapping. Now let's create a method called as get all inside the subreddit service. And the most important annotation we forgot to add before is the at transactional annotation. As we are using a relational database to guarantee consistency, we need to add the annotations to all the methods which are going to interact with the database. For the get all method, we will add the transactional annotation with read only flag as true. 
So inside this method, let's simply call the find all method of the subreddit repository. And now we should do the mappings from subreddit entity to the subreddit DTO. Let's create another method to perform these mappings. And here let me quickly copy the necessary code as we are not doing anything complex apart from just some simple mappings. Once this is completed, return the DTO back to the controller and the controller will return this to and the controller will return this DTO with appropriate HTTP status. All right, so we are coming to the end of the video. Before we go ahead and test our validation logic and APIs, we have to make sure that Spring Security knows about our JWT authentication filter class. So let's go to the Spring Security config class and inside the configure method, let's add this line of code, which is HTTP security dot add before. And to this method, we are passing the JWT authentication filter followed by the username password filter. So now Spring tries to first check for the access token, the JWT token, before trying the username password authentication scheme. With that, all the configuration part is completed. So let's go ahead, start our server and test our implementation. So after starting the server, open your favorite REST client. I'm using Postman. And here I've already prepared some requests to show you how it is working. First of all, I have made a login request with some credentials and I received a token as response. So we are going to use this token inside the bearer scheme and make a request to create the subreddit. As you can see, the request was successfully completed and we received back the ID of the subreddit. Now let's try to read all the subreddits. Also for this, I have prepared a request and here you can see all the subreddits I have in my database. Lastly, let's test the negative case. That means what happens if we try to send an invalid token to the server. So let's go to the authorization tab and remove the last character from the token and send the request. So as you can see, we got back an error message from our server. If you put back the correct access token and make the request again, we should see all the subreddit information. So that is the end of this video. In the next video, we will see how to create some more APIs and also have a look at how to use Mapstruct in our project. If you like this video, please don't forget to like the video, share the video, and lastly, subscribe to the channel. So until next time, take care and happy coding.